I found it on the side of a road. He had just put it out like um, the day before and he was flirting with the idea of selling it. And I asked him if I could buy it and he said $4,000 and I told him I'd give him two. <laughs> Yeah, Louisville, Nashville, and then to New Orleans. There's someone that wants to stop and see the van in Louisville. So. I kind of always had a rambling heart, though. Uh, never really felt glued to anywhere. I had found the van on the side of the road, um, and I just sat there and thought, wow, I could, you know, go anywhere in this thing. And yeah, it doesn't seem that too far out of the way, you know what I mean? So I could, I'll totally go there. And uh, I spent about a year and a half on it, packed up the van in two days, and I left. <laughs> Never looked back. Yeah, no worries. Um, yeah, so. I do Craigslist Rideshare. Um, you can post an ad saying that you're offering a ride or that you need a ride. Um, so naturally, I post a um, post an ad saying, "Hey, I'm going here. Um, just give me whatever you want in gas." Um, and I've had friendships that I've made that I completely forget sometimes that I made them off the internet. And sometimes it's kind of hard for people to wrap their mind around meeting people off the internet and you know the media kind of makes it scary for us to you know go and just meet some random person off the internet and you know but this is what I do I meet strangers so um, it really helps me with gas you know you just I've had seven people in there before. Ziggy is my uh, five and a half year old dog. I got her when I lived in uh, Arizona um, almost four years ago. I don't know what I would do without her. Um, I've lost her a couple of times and it was probably one of the worst things I've ever felt in my whole life. Um, but she's been there for me unconditionally, thick and thin, and um, she uh, she's definitely saving as a single woman if I would still be standing here without her. She's a pretty good judge of character. Um, she has a mean bark. <laughs> she's my road dog. I met Fabian and Klaus um, in Chicago off Craigslist Rideshare. Fabian uh, worked for FEMA and he normally just like rented a car. Um, he was going back to uh, back to Houston and decided to do uh, Craigslist Rideshare. It was his first time. And Klaus was from Germany, traveling the country for three months. Second tattoo I ever got, yeah. and it kind of developed by itself. Back at that time, I was searching for being being grounded, being where it was in myself, like where I'm standing. I don't have rent. I don't, you know, I don't have utilities. I don't really have bills. So gas is my, you know, rent. It just kind of makes up for all that stuff. Well, I'm thinking I'm getting like between 250. If I'm just staying on the highway, about 250 to 300 to a tank, and there's 22 gallons in the tank.
The first thing that went on there was uh, my friend Daniel from Australia. We were in Orlando and we, <laughs> we took Glow in the Dark Paint because he wanted me to uh, remember him. So when I, I had picked a bunch of kids um, on our way to Denver and um, to kind of distract them because I had all these things going on, I, I just gave them some paint. And they just wrote like a little Facebook page and a little um, note on the side. And then when I got to Colorado, I had extra spray paint and we used to, you know, pass around a bottle of whiskey because it was so cold around the fire. And we got maybe a little bit too drunk and started spray painting on the van. After that I would just pull through a gas station and people would just look at the van and, hey, you want to write it? You want to spray paint on it? And now I just, wherever I go, I just put out a paint can and everybody writes on it. I look at those writings and I, I remember the people that, you know, that wrote on there and just, you know, remember their faces and their stories and um, I always have that and that is America, it's the people, it's the people in here. I know, but I'll hope. <laughs> yeah, we've kind of been bombarding Craigslist for the last, like, uh, I don't know, week, week and a half trying to get someone to take me somewhere. Well, Nashville tonight for a concert, and then over to Boone, North Carolina to see my older sister. whole different way of life and yeah. it's just, I don't know, it seems really cool like because we're used to just a regular like a uh, 9, to, nine five. to 5 kind of gig and yeah. it's just, mm -hmm. this is just totally beyond that. It's just a whole different way of like, living and it's just, it's cool to see like how like she deals with like certain things like that, like all the elements, like you're just out there and just living it. It's, yeah. it's pretty sweet. Pretty much just trusting people and um, just living the life of the road. So what did you think of the van? It's an awesome experience. I will repeat it ten times. <laughs> I was gonna take the Greyhound originally, but I'm glad I did the right choice, the fun choice. <laughs> So you, how you be making money though? Besides, you say set up rooms and what else? Well, I do random things on Craigslist. I get people rides. I was selling umbrellas for money. We're about to run out of gas. <laughs> oh, about to run out of gas. About to have to go uh, sell some umbrellas. Who wants an umbrella? It's, it's nice and sunny outside. <laughs> Man, 
How old are you? Uh, I'll be 25. I wish I could just ride out and just ride. So, what are you in jail for? I have drugs. What, what kind of drugs? Coke. Oh, that's nice. Well, they say possession. So you had stuff on you? Yeah. Enough? What, did you get like a intent, what is that called? Like intent to deliver? deliver. That's what you got? Yeah. I'm not stupid, just because I'm white. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I'm joking. I, 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 with, with I know, I know. With this one. People are always like, you need to get something more reliable. You know, you're breaking down all the time, and you know that it's not fun. But what they don't realize is, I break down, and I'll break down in the most random places. And I would have never have went there if it if I had not broken down. And awesome things happen. So I just have to kind of have to laugh when it does break down, and you know, just take it as it comes. I've had so many people help me with the van. I obviously can't do everything. I, you know, I didn't know anything when I left. Who got happy with the welder? Well, I see somebody had a plastic bag over this for a while, right? A guy named Itchy in uh, the Outer Banks. Um, Itchy was a, a very, uh, very interesting character. I couldn't find anyone to weld it on, and I was at a gas station, and this guy pulled up, and he had a. He's driving a welding truck. Oh, yeah. <laughs> after lunch, yeah, we'll get right to it. <laughs> so, uh, <he's> <laughs> you can give him a call for me and tell him thanks. <laughs> he was a, uh, a male prostitute in San Francisco back in the 70s. Uh, he caught malaria in Central America. He was a mechanic on, on, um, on planes for the Navy or something. Idea. There's your camera. It's still doing whatever the hell it's doing. Oh, I got it. Yeah, okay. Don't tighten nobody. Don't you? Mm-mm. Okay. Oh, you're moving out of the way. Yeah. Did, Why? Didn't you say you were going to do it? You want me to do it? Have, I, do, 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 before you snug that down, make sure his next door neighbor is halfway happy. Yeah. I'm okay. not as strong as you. Well, it's... Well, yeah. It does break down all the time. I say it's like a woman because it breaks down once a month. Well, I've been keeping track of how long I've been working on this thing. Um, yeah. You know, it's not that I'm going to charge you for every minute that I've been out here, but it's not my intention to retire on the work that I have done on this thing. That's not my intention. I didn't know anything when I left. I, I just all I knew was how to change my oil. That was it. Um, but being stuck on the side of the road, uh, you kind of have to figure it out yourself. And uh, I have a manual. It's probably the best thing I ever bought. Uh, I went to Breckenridge uh, randomly.
Yeah. If you want to learn how to survive, listen to the Grateful Dead and go to music festivals. You can learn everything you need to know in life from the Grateful Dead and music festivals. I just took a poop in a bag. Um, it was too cold outside to take to go, and uh, someone recommended that I poop in a bag if it needed to be. So that's what I did. Um, not sure how I feel about it, but yeah. So it's uh, whatever time it is, ten something in the morning, and uh, if that's how my day is gonna start, I wonder. Uh, what the rest of the day has in store for me, so. And uh, right when I got there, I didn't know what the hell I was gonna do, and um, these, uh, the van pulls up beside, beside me, and uh, everybody assumes I smoke marijuana, so they were like, hey, you know, I get the usual, hey, you wanna smoke? And I said, hey, no, I don't, I don't, but you can come in. We can't ask if they want to help. They're gonna think that we're chauvinists. Let's just see if they wanna drink whiskey. You know, smoke, smoke a bowl. Well, luckily, pulling broke it up in time, but the damage was done to friggin' Toddy's canine, friggin' Pelletier, knocked Toddy right in the... And uh, I had heard about a van camp. Been living on the streets for about a year, you know. It was just kind of like a place where van dwellers live that was down the road, and uh, they just so happened to be staying there. So this is uh, Tiger Road, where our campsite's at. And there ended up being, at any given time, between five and nine different vans. We were kind of uh, kicked out of town, so we, you know, we always had to stay there. What are you doing? Chilling. Chill on a closed trail. <laughs> All right. If you don't want to lose your pass, go talk to a sheriff's officer and chill on out of here. All right, right, will do. Play. You still have the mentality, you know, and uh, you know you can save money. Th that way, I can get a camper, you know, or, or you know, place or whatever, you know, just something. <laughs> you know, just get, just like not not barely get by, you know. Like I, I, I get, I'll get money, you know, once I have a job, you know, whatever. But uh, you know, just learn or just uh, get get what I need, you know. Yeah. It was really cold and it was, you know, really hard for all of us. I am here all by myself. The sun goes over the mountain at the camp at like 3.30, so it's been dark for a while. Um, right now I just took a shower out of a bowl. There's coyotes across from camp. And all the dogs are freaking out right now. They're ridiculous. They're super, super close. I've been kind of trying to ignore it. I took a piss about 15 minutes ago, and um, I realized how dark it was outside. There was, uh, I couldn't, all I could see was the moon and the stars. I've never seen stars like that before. Um, but I'm here with my lantern, and uh, unfortunately I'm on my last battery, so if it goes out and no one comes back to the camp, I am... SOL. So um, hopefully these coyotes don't kill me, and if they don't, I'm gonna be in the dark until tomorrow. Yeah, we just became really close. I mean, yo yo, <laughs> what's up? So we really just like got together, and uh, every you know they're they're like my brother. Why do you live in a man? <laughs> Freedom. 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 Right. Yeah. You're free. Look at this. This is why. This is why right there. Obviously. Yeah. Two types of female stereotypes that are sung about by the Grateful Dead, and they pretty much nailed it. You have Sugar Magnolias, and she, you know, takes the wheel when you see a double, pays your ticket when you speed. Uh, you know. She's the summer love in the spring, fall, and winter. And then you have Scarlet Begonias. And Scarlet Begonias is, you know, you can tell right away she's into the blues. She's got rings on her fingers and bells in her shoes. But 
And you get to go on an awesome wild adventure where you, you know, have a bunch of fun. But then, when the deal gets rough, she's too hot to open and too cool to bluff. So then you get arrested by the police. <laughs> I left thinking, you know, I'll just figure out what I was going to do for the rest of my life. And just figure everything out. And I think this is what I was supposed to doing, which is just figuring out what makes me happy, which is nothing. <laughs> just living makes me happy now. Never thought I'd say that. But, so right now I'm sitting in the van in Breckenridge, Colorado, like a fucking weirdo. Van's broken down, uh, pretty broke, ran out of propane, but I think I'll be okay. Why do you live in your van? I like it. <laughs> Means having shitty roommates and paying too much for rent. <laughs> How long have you been living in your van for? Uh, off and on, I lived in the van or a camper of some sort for probably a year and a half, two years out of the last three. What's the hardest thing you think about living in a van? Winter. Winter? <laughs> yeah. Fuck yeah. Sometimes it gets nasty cold and, uh, Gotta definitely gear up to stay warm. Alright, so basically the Europeans came to America and the Indians were like, you're so awesome, you can have our land, all we want are casinos, and a trail of tears. <laughs> oh yeah, also, also there's another thing that happened that I forgot about until just now. Peacups. It's 9-11. Which was the day that terrorists attacked our freedom. And in order to protect our freedom, we had to take it away and hide it. Yeah, in, it's true. Put it in a box somewhere. Put it in a box somewhere. Send it off. At the Department of, Home, uh, the Department Department of, of Homeland Security, Security and in their main headquarters. And I think they're stashing a little bit of the freedom in the Denver airport. They're like, all right, America, we have to take your freedoms and hide them in the Patriot Act. So that way, the terrorists can't get them. Yeah, I mean that's that's one of the one of the ways they hide our freedom is by spying on our every American citizen with drones. Yeah, I mean because we, I mean any one of us could be a terrorist. Yeah. Well, I mean no, no, no. If you can afford a condo in Breckenridge, then you're not a terrorist. That's true. That would make sense. Fucking kill him! Fuck him up, dude! Fuck him up, dude! Okay. Yeah, you're, you're good. No, not me. I meant like. Ah. No, you're looking good. No, I not. I didn't mean me. I meant like. I know. I'm just fucking with you. Yeah, yeah. The damage was done. The freaking punch came. Nine freaking tears. Punch. No Tony right in the teeth. Fuck him up, Tony. Fuck him up, dude. Fuck and kill him. Fuck him up, dude. Fuck him up, dude. Just so happened he's an under fucking friggin' cop. So happens he's an <laughs> undercover friggin' cop. No, so blurry. Yeah, so tomorrow I'm gonna leave. Don't know where. Somewhere. Warm.
King and Cubs. The elusive Rocky Mountain Zebra. <laughs> this is the best part. That's a plumber. Oh my god, it's not my ass crack. Uh, <laughs> I got that on camera. Hello everyone. In the non-van world, I think Stas has a favorite show. Just I'm being way too nice. Just being way too nice. Maybe it's the cover. That's what it is. The cover. <sighs> I got down Tiger Road and almost a 7-Eleven and ran out of gas. Got hassled by the man while we're stuck on the side of the road. Although I did get picked up. Hitchhiking. I meet so many people on the road. And they become your family. You take care of each other. And they turn into your brothers and sisters. It becomes really hard sometimes because you know from the beginning you're going to have to say goodbye. It's something that you just have to come to terms with. And it never gets any easier. You have to learn something from each and every one of them. I just uh, said goodbye to uh, Josh and Alan and Tyler. <laughs> I've always had a rambling card. I, I've, I'm always leaving wherever I go. Um, I, I say goodbye often. So I'm in the van and we're putting it on. Keep going! Uh, <laughs> Keep going! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god. That's good! Everything I own in, is in that thing. Besides maybe a few boxes at my mom's house. Um, I didn't know what to do. The brakes went on the van and uh, I crashed into the SUV in an intersection, and then I got towed, and so I went to the tow yard to go sleep my van, and got kicked out of that, so, oh yeah, so now we don't have anywhere to sleep. Oh yeah, this, this hotel's, uh, closed? Closed down. Uh, Luckily it's, you know, zero degrees outside. Yeah. And we have a dog. How's my eye look? Nice. Fattened <laughs> up. No. Oh yeah, I hit my head off the steering wheel. Uh, no, actually, I think this. Uh, um, I my brakes went out and I crashed into um a couple who was um driving a rental. So. So were you a Barker Insurance member? No, were no, they were. Oh, okay, gotcha. Okay, and this was in California. No, this is in Colorado. I literally got kicked out of the. <laughs> got kicked out of the tow yard where I was at and I had nowhere to go that night and I sat um, I sat in a uh, motel laundry room putting quarters in a uh, dryer to stay warm that I snuck into it was like negative 10 degrees outside and I wasn't I, I almost wanted to junk the van I'm really 
really just, um, I really just feel like giving up. I don't remember crying so much before. <laughs> fucking cold. And everything's frozen. My van's fucked. And fucking broke. I just don't know what to do anymore. I, I was just at my wit's end at that point because uh, it was estimated about $5,000 to get it fixed. But I, I had a dear friend in Breckenridge and he sat me down and he said, Stas, this, you know, you can do this without the van. The journey isn't about the van. It's about you and, you know, I've and so that's when I started hitchhiking and that's when I realized that the van shouldn't define me and um, my home is, you know, wherever I lay my head at night. Not so happy Okay, so uh, I decided that I'm going to uh, hitchhike to California instead of going to um, I'm going to hitchhike to the slabs uh, because uh, it's too cold here. The van's gonna take like a week and a half, and I have a um, I have a court date for that ticket because they gave me a ticket for careless driving, even though my brakes went out. So I'm going to do that Monday. Um, in the meantime, I'm in Silverthorne. I have um, a place to stay in um, in Breck. Um, so I have to hitch there. Um, I'm kind of nervous about it. Um, so I just made a sign. Uh, I'm a, I don't. I'm just gonna walk. I just kind of stuck it onto my uh, onto my pack. So. So here it is. So here I go. Yesterday, Zig's getting restless. Um, like, it's really tough out here, and it's, um, I, I can't even believe I'm doing it. Like, I just, just waking up every day, not knowing where I'm gonna sleep or go, and I don't know, but it, I mean, it makes for the adventure, and I live for that. Uh, Our history is made up of fucking uh, moonshine peddlers, just like the one. Yeah. That's what our country is built on. People who were oppressed did not want to deal with fucking any the other man's law. Like who? Okay, I'm a man. Who the f this way I think? Who the fuck am I? Like okay, for instance, uh, two months ago I beat up seven cops. It took 13 of them to get me down, and they tased me like a shitload of times. I, oh, yeah. I even broke a dog's jaw. I feel bad about it. Oh, my That's God. the only thing. Okay. I feel like I'm not like me, like I can't believe I'm doing this. I'm out here like living this like strange life. This life of this like girl who just lives on the road. I mean I live on the road. It's so weird to me. Two, three, four. I like free people all by you. I like free. I'm in a freaking Walmart parking lot, so I'm sitting there, busted up piece of metal, and I was just like, screw it, I'm just gonna take it to the junkyard. If I, you know, what am I gonna do with this? I put an ad on Craigslist. I was looking for a mechanic or somebody to help me, and then I get an email that night, and it was Tim, and he's like, yo. I'm confident I can do this. I'll meet you wherever you are and we'll go wrench it in my house. He had heard about Rideshare, so he went on it and saw me. So so the next morning he shows up and this kid gets out and he's got this crazy long curly hair and you know, he's like a skinny little thing and he's a couple years younger than me and he just immediately makes me start laughing. 
So we take the van and we drop it off in his driveway. And I ended up living in his friggin' driveway for two weeks. And uh, at the very end, you know, it, his his next door neighbor got into on it, his friends. And me and his mom came, came really close and we talked about life, love, and I now know completely everything about him. Without him, I would have never made it back on the road. So thanks to him. Um, I was a bitter, selfish, close-minded person. Um, I was a planner, a list maker, um, just like your typical rat in the race of life. Um, I'm just the complete opposite now. I find myself just being more kind to people because people have been so kind to me. Uh, just being more open-minded and, you know, actually sitting down and talking to someone and not judging them by first glance. I am currently making jewelry to sell along on the side of the road. Getting gas money is becoming a problem. It's like the only thing I worry about. And sometimes when I want to go somewhere, I just want to go. Um, it's getting cold out, it rained, so it's like 63. So I woke up in the middle of the night, and rain was really loud in here when it rains. But I guess I don't worry about money too much. I think need it is when I want it, but I try and be proactive and have it before I need it, I guess. Just a little bit. I have like $17 right now. But all I need are smokes, really, and gas. I'm trying to figure out where I'm going to go next. Seems to be my only problem ever. Tough life. Uh, I have a love-hate relationship. Um, just traveling and to so many different places. Uh, I've seen a lot of the hardships that um, people have overcome. On the outskirts of Lewisburg, West Virginia, is where we are at a Walmart parking lot where we currently live the past three days. <laughs> there's staring over there. <laughs> Somebody always has it worse because there's somebody sleeping on a park bench starving, and I've seen it firsthand. I've been that person. Um, having the van, it forces me to be outside, so I'm definitely with nature. And nature kind of has this funny way of just kind of making you feel at ease, you know, just sitting here looking out at this ocean right now. The water does something great, and um, 
that's what America is all about, America the Beautiful. <laughs> it's definitely helped my soul uh, just, just going out and doing this. Uh, I just, I feel more alive and happy and laughing more. I know if I don't have $40, they'll at least give it to me for $20. I flew on a plane here I'm from New Zealand today, and that's about it, really. All right, well, so I was in Colorado at this foam dome, and I have to go back to California. I broke up with my boyfriend, and I don't want to be here anymore, so... Special drink. Everything, everything's for reason. You think so? He lets his love light shine when that demon of addiction grabbed hold of me. Jesus set me free. I used to sit down in a chair all day. Now that Jesus delivered me from. Well, it's very different. Every fucking dollar you take, you feel guilty about from somebody else. Well, I did at least, and every dollar was just like, oh, what am I gonna spend that on? What am I gonna spend that on? Hopefully it's like worth it. Hopefully it lives up to them giving me that dollar. Like, I need a pack of cigarettes right now, and I don't even want to fucking go get cigarettes because they gave me the money, and I feel like I should fucking spend it on something different than cigarettes. Alright. Yeah. Yeah, right. Right, Jerry. Right, Jerry. <laughs> All right.